What's up everybody, Remy Sovereign here, back with a new video today. And what we're gonna be doing in today's new video is we're gonna be doing a Should You Perform the McKenzie Stretch Part Two. And now the reason we're doing a part two and a follow up to my previous video where I talked about performing the McKenzie Stretch is because I stumbled upon a study and some information that Stuart McGill talked about in his book, Low Back Disorders. And I wanted to address this study specifically. And so what I'm gonna do is a research review. So we haven't kind of done one of these in a while. And the reason I'm doing this is because there's some information that you guys should know regarding the McKenzie stretch. And I wanted to kind of make some clarifications with regards to my previous video. So the title of the research review that we'll be doing today is Disc Prolapse Evidence of Reversal with Repeated Extension. So essentially what Stuart McGill and his colleague John Skinnell did in the study is they took the spines of pigs. So they took the cervical spines of 18 pigs and they induced herniations in them and they wanted to see the effectiveness of the McKenzie stretches or McKenzie extension postures in essentially healing a disc herniation or migrating the nucleus material back into the center. So if we do a little bit of a recap and a refresher, the reason why the McKenzie stretch is prescribed to individuals is because the idea behind it is that by going into repeated extension is that you're going to migrate that nucleus material back into place, essentially milk that kind of damaged or herniated material back into place. And so we know that with repeated flexion, specifically under load, we can create a posterior disc herniation. So by doing the opposite extension, in theory, we might be able to move that disc material back into place. And so that's what McGill attempted to look at. And so now the reason they took pig spines is because that is similar to human lumbar spines. And at the same time, it's not really practical or ethical to use human lumbar spines unless you're using post-mortem and that can be hard to obtain. So the cervical spine of pigs are similar to human lumbar spines and that's the reasoning that they use them. And they use the, the C3, C4 level in which they induce herniations in those pig spines post-mortem. And so what they hypothesized was that by going into repeated extension postures after inducing a, a disc herniation, that the nucleus material would migrate back into place. And they also hypothesized that for discs that this didn't occur, this may be due to the herniation being severe or in the case of maybe a disc extrusion or severe disc protrusion. So what they did prior to inducing these herniations in these pigs was they took a radiologist, blinded them, and the radiologist looked at imaging findings of each of the pigs to determine if they were healthy or not. So the radiologist looked at all the spines, determined that they were healthy, then they induced the herniations, then the radiologist did a follow-up to look at the pig spines and to then describe the amount of damage or the type of damage that has occurred in the loss of disc height that may have occurred in those pig spines. And so what the radiologist determined was that two of the pig spines ended up with vertebral end plate fractures and they didn't actually have a prolapse. Five of them had a loss of, a loss of disc height but they did not have a disc prolapse based on their criteria in the study. So those seven subjects were excluded from going into the extension-based treatment. Now, the other 11 subjects had induced, a, they had induced prolapse or they had a prolapse that occurred. And in five of the subjects, they had moderate disc height loss and the other six, they had severe disc height loss with the prolapse. And so those 11 subjects went under the treatment of those extension positions or extension postures immediately after those herniations occurred or prolapses occurred. And what they found was that in the five subjects with moderate disc height loss, they actually found the extension positions or postures to be beneficial in that group. However, in the six subjects that had severe disc height loss, they found that the extension postures had no effect or did nothing to improve that disc herniation. And so what McGill essentially concluded, or in Skinnell, his colleague concluded was that in a moderate disc herniation or prolapse, an individual may experience benefits from doing these extension postures. And this is actually the first research to actually show that the McKenzie stretch or McKenzie 
method may be effective in helping individuals with disc herniation. However, it didn't, call, it didn't occur in all disc herniations, which is important to keep in mind because the six subjects with severe disc height loss and disc prolapse didn't experience those benefits. So the important kind of takeaway is that disc height loss seems to play a role in the effectiveness of the McKenzie stretch or McKenzie exercises. And so in low back disorders, McGill actually states that based on the research that he's conducted and seen that 70% of an individual's disc that is remaining or more, the, by doing the McKenzie postures and McKenzie stretches, those individuals may experience benefits from doing those extension positions or postures. However, individuals with less than 70% of their disc height remaining, there has been nothing proven or nothing shown for that group or that population to actually experience benefits from doing those extension postures. So what we're seeing here is that disc height seems to play a role in the effectiveness of the McKenzie stretch and McKenzie exercises. And the reason being is because as we lose disc height, we're, we start to, as we lose disc height and we go into those extension positions, the facet joints now may create a greater restriction and may prevent further movement or further migration of the nucleus material back into place because of the restrictions placed or because of the restrictions by the facet joints to move that herniated disc material back into place. So we can't get that same movement because of that restriction and that's the result of the disc height loss. But at the same time now, it's important to keep in mind that the more severe the disc herniation, the less likely one is going to experience benefits from the McKenzie stretches. So a perfect case and example would be someone with a sequestered disc or a disc extrusion. So a sequestered, a sequestered disc is where we have a nucleus, a piece of the nucleus material that is essentially ripped out or ripped off and has been kind of hidden away outside of the, the disc itself. And that could move into some sort of localized area. Disc extrusion is now we have the, the whole annulus has fully blown ripped apart and the nucleus material is on the outside of the disc now. Now it's still intact though, which makes it a disc extrusion or a non-contained herniation. Those two populations would in theory not experience any benefit at all from the McKenzie stretch because they are so severe and that nucleus material by just going into those extension positions wouldn't essentially move that material back into place. And the same could be said for a disc protrusion or a severe disc protrusion where the herniated nucleus material has moved towards the border of the outer portion of the annulus. Now the annulus is still intact, but it's at the outer border. It may be harder to move that herniated nucleus material back into place just because it's so far out from the center. So in the case of maybe a more moderate or smaller herniated nucleus material, the McKenzie stretch may be effective, but also disc height plays a role as well, which we're seeing from this study and from what McGill said in the book of low back disorders. And that could be due to, the, like I mentioned, the restriction of the facet joints, but also maybe due to different stresses played on the, placed on the lower back as a result of that disc height loss as well. So with that being said though, now that we know that the McKenzie stretch may be effective in some cases, and in a lot of cases it essentially isn't, I still advise against it, and McGill does, advises against the dynamic postures of going into that extension position. And the reason being now, and I'm, st I'm still consistent with the previous video where I, I recommend against it because of the issue with the facet joints. And McGill talks about this as well, is because as we constantly go into that dynamic extension posture over time, we keep going into extension. Yeah. Over the years, as we continuously do this, we're gonna place a lot of stress onto the facet joints. And essentially by placing a lot of stress there, an individual can become extension intolerant and develop extension-based back pain. So they can maybe develop arthritic facet joints. So let's look at my case, for example. I had arthritic facet joints. And so by doing these McKenzie stretches in the early stages, caused me issues when I went into extension. And my back would flare up and I would have kind of a joint-related pain. So right there, I'm already making my back worse. I'm essentially making a problem that I already have worse. And that was not related to my disc herniation pain that I was having, that radicular pain. And so that is one of the primary reasons why I would not prescribe the, those dynamic extension positions to anyone. But at the same time, now McGill doesn't talk about this and I can only 
talk about this based on my personal experience and others' experiences that have shared their experience with regards to the, doing the McKenzie stretch in the comments and some of my subscribers, is the case where it may cause ridiculous pain in some cases, where individuals have a pretty severe herniation, whether that's a disc protrusion or extrusion or whatever, that is very close to the nerve root. And so when going into that extension position or hyperextension position, it may cause that disc to pinch out a little bit and hit the nerve root and cause a flare up with regards to that nerve root and cause ridiculous pain now. And that's what I personally experienced. And that's another reason why I do not recommend the McKenzie stretch because it could maybe flare up someone's pain in their lower back. And with regards to those two factors, those are two of the primary reasons. So, and so what I actually recommend, and I've talked about this in the previous video, it's still all consistent, is that I recommend prone lying. Prone lying with a pillow or two under your hips to keep you out of extension. Now I've made videos of me just kind of lying on the floor before, and I still kind of consistently do this over time. And I still do this today just because of more of the decompressive effect and because I still do have a disc herniation and I personally just don't like, don't like to sit and I don't like to be really standing for a long period of time either. So lying on your stomach, you're still essentially getting the same effects. If you look at gravity, it could be still pulling that nucleus material back into place, but now you're not, you're in a static position. You're not dynamically shooting up into extension consistently over time and stressing your facet joints. So you're eliminating the problem of stressing the facet joints and you're still getting the benefits of moving that nucleus back in place because you have gravity pulling you downwards. And this is still somewhat consistent with the McKenzie method because if you look to one of the kind of baseline stretches is that he recommends, or the method recommends prone lying. And McGill also recommends it in his book is just prone lying on the stomach. But now they don't talk about putting pillows under your hips. And the reason I, I recommend that specifically because with gravity, it's pulling your lower back down into the ground and it may cause you to go in extension when you're in that static position for a long period of time. And that could straight stress the facet joints over a, over a period of time if you stay like that. So that's why I recommend the hips, on, or sorry, the pillows under the hips to keep you out of extension. But you're still getting the effects of the, the nucleus material getting pulled back into place. And so that I just kind of wanted to clarify guys with regards to my previous video is that there is some research to kind of support the McKenzie stretch, but it's in, like I said, with individuals with 70% or more of their disc, rem disc height remaining and in more of a less severe herniation case where we don't have an extrusion or a sequestered disc. This is more of a contained herniation that is not severe. So that's why some people may experience benefits from it, but in my opinion, the benefits don't, out, don't outweigh the side effects that may occur, like I said, the stress of the facet joints. So I just wanted to kind of touch on that, guys. Now keep in mind, I'm not a lower back pain expert. I'm just passionate about learning all this stuff because it's something I personally deal with and I've gone through the injury myself. I know what it's like. And I also do want to share this with others out there because it's important to hear about this information. A lot of people don't know about this. If you go ask your physical therapist, or your chiropractor, I could guarantee probably 98%, 99% would not know about this um, unless they're you know, an experienced clinician, then they would know about this and this research here. But a lot of physical therapists, chiropractors out there just blindly will throw the McKenzie stretch at individuals. They wonder why they get worse. And this, here's this research actually showing that, yes, in some cases it may work, but in others it's not gonna work and it's dependent on the disc height and other factors as well in terms of the severity of that herniation. So that being said, guys, that is it for this research review. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you're someone that actually experienced benefits with doing the McKenzie stretch, and I know some of you guys have already mentioned, a few of you in my previous video that some of you had benefits from it, and a lot of you mentioned that you actually got significantly worse doing this, and I'm one of those as well that got worse doing this. And the point being, what I want to say with regards to this is that, yes, it may be for some, but at the same time, it may not be for a lot of other people as well. Do I personally recommend it for people with disc herniations, even if they have 70% of their disc height remaining? No, I would not recommend it because of the facet joint issue like I talked about, and it could cause an additional problem to arise. So I would not recommend it at all, those dynamic positions, just the prone lying is what I would recommend. 
So that is my personal opinion, guys. And that is it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys learned something from this. If you guys would like to see more of these research reviews, and as I continue to read this book, I will continue to share more information from what I learned, guys. So until next time, all the best. Take care, and I wish you guys a successful and productive day.